Well, I actually have another retro mask to show you for a change. So it, this is a US M3 Army Diaphragm gas mask. And it's really hard to find information about these online. I don't think the gas mask wiki even has an article on it. So um, I'll get it out and show you. And if you're in the UK, they might still have some available. I got it from Swanson Militaria. And I think it was about £40. So here's the bag. It's a weird bag because it's printed this way. But the flap to open it is this way. So the flap and the actual bag don't match up. But whatever. That's a bit, got, I'm a bit rusted. Uh, it says at the top M I V A 1 E A E lot 54. Let's just get the mask out. So here we have it. It's quite a sinister looking mask. There's the end of the hose. This one didn't come with a filter because these have asbestos filters. The sellers have to take them off to sell the mask legally. So this one doesn't have a filter, which is fine by me because I don't really do anything with World War II filters anyway. I wouldn't just tape them up and put them on display. So um, there you can see, I imagine you might be something to do with its name as well because they always have you as an example of them. But you can kind of see where masks like the M9 came from design-wise from these masks. So what gives this mask its name is we've got a big speech diaphragm on the front. That's what it's called a diaphragm mask. So basically behind there is a plastic plate, that plastic plate or some sort of foil of some sort would vibrate when you talk. It looks like plastic to me, obviously the mask being 70 odd years old is starting to fall apart a bit, but it is essentially a plastic disc, you speak through it, it amplifies your voice. Same as you'll be familiar with with much more modern masks. If you think of something like the Soviet PMG, or PMG2, or MM1, it's that kind of voice diaphragm, just a bit more primitive because it was made during World War II. So you'd have the hose going to your filter which you keep in the satchel on your side, and you've got this weird two sort of prong system going into the mask, and that's obviously <coughs> to go into the Tissot tubes to go to each of the eyes. So rather than having a more complicated system inside to separate them, you simply have two of these tubes going into each of the eyes to defog them. The exhale valve is underneath here. Now um, just a bit of a warning, when I first got this mask there was visible asbestos on it, I have since disposed of that, but even with the filters removed you can still sometimes find asbestos laying around these masks, obviously I'm not going to wear it for you. Uh, if you want to see the inside of the mask, there we go. You can see some of the actual plasticness of the speech diaphragm in there. And obviously your exhale valve is at the bottom, your intakes come through the eye pieces. So yeah, it's quite a cool mask. Uh, there's some stamps on the bottom, I'm going to see if I can read them. It looks like something like Anchonet, which I guess is a tyre company or rubber company. M22141, so this mask is from 1941, so it's pretty old. And it says Lot 65EA again on the strap, nothing on the other side. So yeah, this is quite a cool little thing, obviously a very early attempt at a speech diaphragm mask. And like I said, I can't find much information on these online, but yeah, it's a cool mask. Um, so whether or not it was just shortened to USU as the name of the mask, and then, um, you know, rather than being the M3 speech diaphragm as the longer name, but yeah, it's quite a cool thing. You can see, as I said, where influences from later American masks came from with this. It does have a bit of an M9 appearance about it. Seems a shame, though, that if they made a speech diaphragm as early as 1941, that they didn't just uh, keep putting them on the other masks. Well, I guess for a cost reasons, they didn't. But there you go, USM9. Uh, sorry, USU mask or M3 speech diaphragm mask with a um, weird shaped bag. Uh, you can get them in the UK at the moment from Swanson Military for about 40 pounds. But as said. Just give it a good look over first and remove any asbestos if you can see the fibres clumped together anywhere. Um, but it's a cool, cool mask.